Good evening, church family. I am so excited. Thank you guys so much uh, just for helping us enter into the presence of our Lord. I just, I love it. Um, so welcome. Uh, my name is Shelly Harp, and I am the discipleship pastor here at Trinity Church. I'm going on four months. Um, my husband, Barry, is uh, also on staff. He came on staff in August as CFO, and so we are so happy to be a part of Trinity Church. So I want to tell you just a little bit about my family and where we've come from so you know a little bit more about who we are and why we're here. Um, we are uh, from the this area, the Texas area, the Panhandle, uh, north of Amarillo, Dalhart. Has anyone heard of Dalhart, Texas? You've probably driven through there, right? So um, we lived in Dalhart for the first 15 years of our marriage, and then we moved to Africa. Yes. Yeah, we're those people. So we have five children, five children. Um, our daughter, uh, Jordan, is... 31, there she is, she's going to be really mad that I picked this picture, but uh, my daughter Jordan is 31 and she's here with us tonight. My son Jake is 26, uh, there's Barry, uh, Eli, um, that's me in the back with hair, and then Sam is in the very back, and then Nate is our 19-year-old, and then guys, this cutie pie in the middle is my grandson. And his name is Hudson, and he is seven years old. And let me just tell you, being a grandparent is where it's at. Can I just tell you? So uh, my older children, I would love more grandkids, please. Okay. So just to tell you, just to tell you a little bit of a backstory, and then I want to get into uh, what the Lord has for us tonight, because it's, I'm, I'm so excited about it. I, I know you're going to be really surprised what it's about. However... Um, we uh, just celebrated our 21st anniversary last week. We are a blended family. So I was married once before, was a single mom uh, for several years, and then the Lord brought me Barry Harp. And amen. Wait for it, ladies. Wait for it. Wait for it. So anyway, uh, about, I think it was in 2012, I had been uh, reading a book uh, that really kind of messed my hair up, and it was called It's Not Okay With Me by Janine Maxwell. And when I read the book, it was not something that I thought was my, it just wasn't my mission field. It wasn't what I was called to. But by the time I finished reading the book, the Lord had stirred my heart, and um, I thought, you know, I'm going to go to Africa. I'm going to go on a service trip. And they had a little link in the back of the book that you could go online and sign up for a service trip. So I did that. So in 2012, I went to Swaziland, which is now called Eswatini, Africa, uh, all by myself. Now, some of you, if you, knew me, if you know me, you would know that I was absolutely terrified, but I did it afraid. Can I tell you, when God calls you to something, you can do it, even if you're afraid. Amen? So went back in 2013, just fell in love with Africa, fell in love with everything about it. And I was begging my husband, would you please go? You got to see what I'm seeing. You got to experience what I'm experiencing. And he said, absolutely not. He said, I am a sender. You are a goer. Do you know people like that? Okay. Okay. So fast forward to 2000, the end of 2015, my husband sold his business in Dalhart. Africa was not on the radar. Fast forward three or four more months, Barry walks into the kitchen one day and he says, Shelly, he said, I think, I think we need to go on a mission trip to Africa. I was stirring a pot and I think I dropped the spoon and I said, are you okay? And he said, I just feel like the Lord is saying we need to go. I was like, great, we'll go on a 14-day service trip. And he's like, no, no. I feel like the Holy Spirit is saying we need to go for a longer period of time. 
He said, let's start, he said, maybe three to six months, something like that. I was like, okay. I said, um, but I have a brand new grandson. He was a year and a half old. And I said, I'm not going. And he said, well, will you pray about it? And I'm like, oh, okay. So I prayed about it, and of course the Lord is like, this is how he talks to me. He kind of thumps me. And he's like, Shelly, what are you doing? This is what you've prayed for. I'm like, oh, yeah, I forgot about that. <laughs> so I said, okay, let's go. We sold, long story short, we sold our house. We sold our car. We put what we had left into storage, and we moved our three youngest children to Swaziland. And they were 7, 10, and 14 at the time. And it was hard. And when we got there, the first three months, Barry, the minute he got there, I knew it. I could see it all over his face. I was so mad. He's, he's like, I love this place. And I'm like, Lord, you got to be kidding me. Um, and three, years turn, or three months turned into five years. Never say never. You never know what the Lord will do with your yes. So, as we are talking today, I'm going to ask you two big questions. Are you ready? The first one is, are you a disciple? And the second one is, are you making disciples? Are you with me? So let's stand and read God's word together. This is Luke 8, 4. Now bear with me, it's a little long, but you're going to get it, okay? Luke 8, 4 through 15. It says, now when a large crowd was coming together and those from the various cities were journeying to him, he spoke by way of a parable. The sower went out to sow his seed, and as he sowed, some fell beside the road, and it was trampled underfoot, and the birds of the sky ate it up. Other seed fell on the rocky soil, and when it came up, it withered away because it had no moisture. Other seed fell among the thorns, and the thorns grew up with it and choked it out. And yet other seed fell into the good soil and grew up and produced a crop of a hundred times as much. And as he said these things, he would call out, the one who has ears, let him hear. Now his disciples began asking him what this parable meant. And he said, to you, it has been granted to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God. But to the rest, they are told in parables. So that while seeing, they may not see, and while hearing, they may not understand. Now, this is the parable. The seed is the word of God. And those beside the road are the ones who have heard, and then the devil comes and takes away the word from their heart so that they will not believe and be saved. Those on the rocky soil are the ones who, when they hear, they receive the word with joy. Yet, these do not have a firm root. They believe for a while, and in a time of temptation, they fall away. And the seed which fell among the thorns, these are the ones who have heard. And as they go on their way, they are choked by worries, riches, pleasures of this life. And they bring no fruit to maturity. But the seed in the good soil, the good soil, these are the ones who have heard the word with a good and virtuous heart and hold it firmly and produce fruit with perseverance. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. You may be seated. Heavenly Father, we love you, and we thank you, Lord God, for your word, and I know that you watch over it to perform it. Lord, I pray that your Holy Spirit come, fill us, teach us tonight, and let us have ears that hear. Amen. Okay, so some of you might be wondering, I have a picture of a bucket, and this message is called The Bucket. Now, I want you to stay with me, and you'll figure out what I'm going to talk about here. But I want to start with, what is a disciple? I'm going to give you three points. A disciple is, number one, a believer. John 5, 24 says, Truly, truly, I say to you, the one who hears my word and believes, believes him who sent me has eternal life 
and does not come into judgment, but has passed out of death into life. Amen? I know you hear this scripture a lot when you come in to service. Pastor Carl says it. Most people who are on this platform say it. But in Romans uh, chapter 10, it says, If we confess with our mouth and believe in our heart that uh, Jesus is Lord and believe in our heart that God raised him from the dead, what? You will be saved. Amen? Now, I'm going to throw you for a little loop here. This is something I saw, and I've never seen this before. It just jumped out at the page at me, and I thought it was important, and I wanted to share it with you. And it's in John 6, 64 through 66. Jesus said, but there are some of you who do not believe. For Jesus knew from the beginning who they were who did not believe and who, and who, was, who would betray him. And he was saying, For this reason I have told you that no one can come to me unless it has been granted him by the Father. This is the kicker here. As a result of this, many of his disciples left and would no longer walk with him. Not all disciples are believers. I'd never seen that before. And I just thought it was important to share that with you. But it's so crucial as a disciple that you believe. That you believe in the one that you follow. Number two, a disciple is a follower Jesus uses the word follow me 13 times in the Gospels. 13 times. That's amazing to me. Do you think he was trying to make a point? I do. And it says in Luke 9, 23, he was saying to them all, if anyone wants to come after me, you must deny, he must deny himself, take up his cross daily, and follow me. I love this scripture, and I, I want to pick it apart for just a second because I think it's really important. It says he must deny himself. That means you have to die to what you want, what you think, and how you feel in order to follow him. So I ask you, are you a follower? And I want to tell you, it's going to cost you something. It's going to cost you something. You know, my family, and I always get choked up about this, but um, there were things that were inconveniences, like Pastor Mickey shared a couple of weeks ago. But the inconveniences, really, the Lord gave us a grace for, and, and they were not inconvenient. Things like food, issues with food. I'm a very picky eater. Um, completely fearful of all creepy crawly things. Um, you know, there were, there were inconveniences. Not always uh, having electricity when we wanted it, clean water when we wanted it, um, air conditioning when we wanted it. That was a hard one for me. Sweaty Betty here. So, but it cost, it did cost us something. And it not only cost me and Barry something to go, but it cost my kids something. The ones who went and the ones who stayed. It cost them something. It cost us spending birthdays together, Christmases on occasion, uh, funerals. We miss funerals. We miss weddings. And the thing that was probably the most difficult for me was watching Hudson grow up and turn into the cute little seven-year-old he is now. But it cost us something. But can I tell you this? When you choose to be obedient and follow Jesus, even though it costs you something, it's absolutely worth it. And because of our obedience, our children 
that it cost them something here, that we're left here, our family that was left here. Not only out of our obedience will we receive a blessing, but they'll receive a blessing also. We'll get to that in a minute. Okay, the third thing a disciple is, is a student. We are all students. We should all be discipled. This is so important to the heart of Pastor Carl, our elders, our deacons, our leadership. It is crucial to us to create a culture here at Trinity of discipleship. We want you to grow. You know, the, all of the classes and the things that we offer, uh, community um, in the fall, for example, uh, we're going to have 26 plus uh, pillar and equip classes and community groups that you can be a part of. Dream Team has places where you can serve anywhere, in all places, in all your giftings throughout Trinity Church and our community. We want you to get plugged in and connect in these areas because we want you to grow. We want you to mature in Christ. You don't want to drink milk forever. How many of you like some steak? Okay, we want some meat, right? We want to mature. We want to grow in Christ. And that is our heart for you. And not only, when I, when I say grow in Christ, I also mean grow close to Jesus. We want you to have a relationship, a one-on-one -on -one relationship with him. That's what a follower, a believer and a student. That's what they do. I want to share this with you. It's one of my favorite passages, and it's actually in the message version just because I love how, I just love how it comes together. It's just beautiful. And in Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 through 30, it says this. Are you tired? Are you worn out, burned out on religion? Come to me. Get away with me and you'll recover your life. I'll show you how to take a real rest. Walk with me and work with me. Watch how I do it. That's learning, by the way. That's what students do. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting on you. Keep company with me, and you'll learn to live freely and lightly. This is discipleship. Amen? My African friends, after everything that you preach, teach, you hear amen or hallelujah. Can my African friends... Uh, testify to this? Yeah. Oh. Yes. Okay. We are all students. Starting September 7th um, is when some of those classes are going to roll out. So I want you to be anticipating that. I want you to be expecting and asking the Lord, how do you want me to grow? How can I grow, grow closer to you? Who do you want me in community with? that we can disciple one another. Romans 12, 2 says this, and do not be conformed any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you may prove what the will of God is, that which is good and acceptable and perfect. It's so important to know the word of God. We must know it. It is your life. It's what, it's what you hide in your heart. It's what uh, helps you understand not only the character of God, who he is, who he's been, who he will be for you, but it also shows you who you are, who you are. And when you know who you are and you know who he is, You can do anything. 
in Christ. So let's talk about this, the word do. What does a disciple do? They sow seeds. Amen? They sow seeds. You are a carrier of that good news. You are. Now, how mad would you be at your mailman if he never delivered your mail or your packages? Would would that upset you? What if he decided, you know, I'm just going to carry this around. I'm not going to give it to who it belongs to. I think I'm just going to, I think I'll just leave it in the truck. Not a very good mailman, right? Guess what? You're the mailman. You're the messenger. You're the carrier of the gospel. The carrier of these seeds. And you need to deliver them. What do these seeds look like? They look like a couple of things. Number one, they look like love. John 13, 35 says this, By this all people will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. That means you love people that may not love you. You love people that may not look like you, smell like you, talk like you, have the same lifestyle as you. Same political views as you. We're called to love them. We're also called to love people that have hurt us. That's a real fun one. Thanks, Shelly. I didn't say it. Jesus did. Take it up with him. Okay? We are to plant these seeds of love. The second thing that seeds look like. We touched on this just a little bit. They look like obedience. Now, nobody likes this word. I never title a message obedience. Nobody would come. Nobody would show up, right? It's not a fun word. It sounds painful. But let me tell you something. Obedience is hard. It's hard. I'm not going to lie to you. It's hard. But disobedience is harder. It's harder. John 8, 31 says this. Jesus was saying to those Jews who had believed him, if you continue in my word, then you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Isn't that good news? If you continue in my word, if you obey it. James 1.25 says this, but one, the one who has looked intently at the perfect law, the law of freedom, and has continued in it, not having become a forgetful hearer, but an active, effectual doer, this person will be blessed in all he does. Amen? So, Like I said before, there were things that we said yes to that were hard. But can I tell you, our time in Africa was just, it's it's almost, I could tell you stories. Pastor Carl said I could keep you to 1030, by the way. (laughs) Not really. I'm sorry, Pastor Carl. Um, No, we're going to finish up. But we saw the Lord perform miracles. We saw the blind see, the deaf hear, the lame walk. We've seen people raised from the dead. Yep, that still happens today. Mm Mm-hmm. Jesus still does that today. We cast out demons. It was so much fun. I love casting out demons. My boys even call me the demon slayer. 
They were going to make me a t-shirt. You still haven't done that, by the way. But Jesus did not tell his disciples, which, by the way, are not just the 12. They're all of you as well. He said, greater things than these will you do. You can do hard things. See, God's going to fulfill his plans, his purposes. He's going to do it, whether you say yes or whether you say no. He's going he's gonna to do what he's going to do. But he chose you. He wants to use you. So will you say yes? Will you say yes? yes. Okay. I thought, well, okay, I'm done. Okay. Another thing a disciple does, and then we're going to wrap this up. They bear fruit. John 15, 8 says, My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit. And so prove, that's proof that you're my disciples. You bear fruit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Did I say all of them? Goodness, okay. Galatians 5, go look it up, 522. Get in your Bible, look it up. You are to bear fruit. John 15, 5 says, I am the vine, you are the branches. The one who remains in me, abides in me, and I in him, bears much fruit. But guess what? Apart from him, you can't do a thing. Nothing. You can, you can do nothing apart from him. Amen? So, I want to tell you a little story. Why this message is called the bucket. Okay? I don't know if you saw this, the bucket of seeds. Okay? I want to tell you a little story about my dad. My dad's name is Richard. Um, and uh, he was born again at 46 years old. And I got to play an amazing uh, little piece part of that. And when he was born again, I'm not kidding, I have seen many, many people transformed by Jesus. But my dad is absolutely the most transformed person I have ever witnessed. And when he was born again, he did, I mean, he did a 180. He was an agnostic before or self-proclaimed agnostic. And I even gave him a Bible once, and he, I think he used it as a doorstop. Or that's what he told me he was going to do with it. And uh, so when, uh, when he did have this encounter with Jesus, um, he, was, he was just, he was a different person. So he, t- he told me one time, he said, Shelly, when I was born again, the Lord gave me a bucket of seeds. And I want to empty every seed out of my bucket before I go home and see Jesus. That's his goal. That is his goal. He wants every seed to be planted that the Lord has placed in his bucket. Do you want that? My dad is 70 years old. And uh, he has a disease called scleroderma. He's in about year eight and a half of that, and if you know what scleroderma is, that's pretty unheard of. But he had to get an iron infusion yesterday. I talked to him this morning. He really wanted to be here. He didn't know I was going to talk about him. Um, but uh, he, he, when he gets iron infusions, it just kind of wears him down. And so he wasn't able to come. But when I talked to him at lunch, I was like, what are you doing, Dad? It sounds like you're in the car. And he said, yeah, um, I'm taking a homeless man to lunch. I said, okay. I said, planting those seeds? He said, amen. (laughs) Planting those seeds. And you know, he still, I mean, he goes into prisons. He goes into, he he teaches at Celebrate Recovery. Um, You name it, my dad is, wherever he goes, he's planting a seed. He's planting a seed. So two questions. Are you a disciple? And are you making disciples? What I love about Jesus is when you are in him and he is in you 
it becomes part of who you are. And everywhere you go and everyone you come in contact with is an opportunity. An opportunity to hear their story, an opportunity to share the good news that is alive on the inside of you. Alive on the inside of you. And if you're wondering, Shelly, I I can't do this. I'm, I'm shy or I'm scared or whatever the reason is. I don't know enough. I hear that one a lot. I don't know the Bible. That's okay. Just share your story. Just tell people what he did for you. Encourage them. Plant those seeds of love. Let people see your obedience. Let people see Jesus in you. And I want to leave you with this last quote because I absolutely love it. Because everybody can do this. Are you ready? Everybody. D.T. Niles said this, evangelism is just one beggar telling another beggar where to find bread. I'm going to say that again. Evangelism is one beggar telling another beggar where to find bread. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Father God, we love you and we thank you. We thank you, thank you, thank you for what you are doing in this place, what you are doing in our community, what you are doing in Lubbock. Lord Jesus, I thank you what you are doing in the hearts of your people. You are drawing those those close to you. You're drawing them near. So Lord, I thank you that you are doing this. Lord, I pray that every single person that has heard this word will become an effectual doer. Lord, that they will say yes to being discipled and they will say yes to making disciples. Thank you, Jesus, for who you are. We love you and it's in your name we pray, amen.